calibers of artillery gun can range up from 20 to 400 millimeters. It can shoot up to a distance of 40 kilometers or even more. Today, once again, we're talking about artillery men. This is War is Algebra, and I'm your host, Daniel Sal. Watch this. This is a Jitsin, and no, this is not a flower, but the firepower of the Ukrainian army. Two shells on the ground. Could you please tell us what we're looking at right now? This is Soviet towed artillery to a 36 B Jitsin. Well, it's a kind of flower, the Jitsin. Interesting. Quite interesting. The 2036 Jitsin B is a towed artillery piece, meaning it is hauled like a trailer by a vehicle. Go on, all the way. How does this system actually work? It takes about two and a half to three minutes to get from traveling to combat position. The Jitsin gun only fires from a such plate means when the plate is detached from the ground. That's because it has large recoils. After each shot, the barrel moves back. See? These numbers are they show the recoil, a higher aiming angle means less recoil. A lower aiming angle means more recoil. What's the range? The maximum range for a fragmentation high explosive projectile is 28 kilometers. And for an active reactive one, it's 33.5 kilometers. Specifications, height, trail gun, weight 9,760 kilograms, length including the barrel, 12,300 to 12,920 millimeters, width 2,788 millimeters, height in combat position 2,760 millimeters, caliber 150 to point per millimeters, shell weight 46 kilogram. The gun is designed for destruction of enemy personnel, vehicles, and ammunition depots. And it's cold. Load up. Here's the shell. It hooks up like this. The skirt is a kind of fuse it unscrews. See? It's marked caliber 152. Minus means it's a reduced weight shell. And this is the casing. The full charge, you can't assemble anything from a full charge anymore. Why reduce the weight? You see, there are different targets at different distances. 20 kilometers or 15. They can also be at a distance of 10 kilometers and when you need to shoot at a shorter distance. We remove bundles of powder. Two shells here, two shells. Tell us about your crew. What is the function of each soldier? We have eight people, including the driver as the commander. My main task is to put everyone in their place. This is Alexander, he's the gunner, here. All this is the gunner's mechanism. Alexander works with it. This is the rotating mechanism. Raising and lowering the barrel turns left, right. Yura is the gunner, he carries the shell. Vitya carries the charge. Petro assembles, screws on the fuse, and Slavic is our charge assembler. He's the one who sends the shell. This is the carriage. In the carriage, the wedge of the breech opens. The shell is placed on the carriage and pushed by a semi-automatic chain. Sometimes, when they can damage the tube, there's a pusher for such cases. Manually lift at the breech wedge once, that's it. Then it works in automatic mode, opens, closes. And where is the shot fired from? The cord is laid, pulled through. We step back further and that's all. Then the crew waits for information on how many shells are needed. We do six to eight shots per minute. In addition to the main crew, there is also a group that works remotely, which includes a communication operator, a topographic surveyor, a gunner. This interesting device. So, this is the most interesting crew, without which this big stuff doesn't work. So, first of all, tell for civilians what is this. This is a periscopic artillery compass. It has a magnetic arrow, and it gives us directional angles, magnetic azimuth. So it's mathematics, right? Absolutely correct. It's about mathematics. So, the topographic surveyor comes out, sets up the periscopic artillery compass. I indicate the main direction of the gun, and the topographic surveyor orients the guns. To deploy the system and make a shot, a coordinated team needs only 10 minutes. 
And how much does this artillery system cost? Well, I can't really say. What about the shell? I don't remember that either. Darn, too bad. Wanted to buy one. Oh, great. I see a gun. Watch this. On the battlefield of the modern war, which Russia unleashed against Ukraine on the border with the European Union, many artillery units can be seen. Here's another one, but unlike the Jeepson, it doesn't need an additional vehicle, it can move on its own. This is the Archer self-propelled howitzer system. This is a Swedish self-propelled artillery. It was created based on a Volvo career tractor. Then they installed the gun, the FH-70 howitzer. One of the advantages of this system is the cabin folds relative to the body, making the machine quite maneuverable, allowing it to move through forests and occupied positions in hard-to-reach places, among trees, from where it is difficult to exit. Specifications with 3 meters, height 3.4 meters, with remotely controlled firing station 4 meters, max elevation 10.4 meters, length 14.3 meters, weight 38 tons, calibre 155 millimeters, barrel length 50 to calibre, elevation minus 1 to plus 70, traverse minus 85 to plus 85. Archer is considered one of the most effective artillery system in its class. It's very fast and mobile thanks to the powerful engine of the Volvo A3OD tractor. The crew consists of three people, the driver, the commander, and the gunner operator, that's me. The driver controls the vehicle. The commander stays in communication with the control point. As for me, I enter data into the computer and monitor the condition of the gun. I do everything so that it fires when and how it's needed. The installation quickly deploys and folds up. This is also a huge plus. You can fit into 30 seconds. The firing range of Archer varies from 30 to 50 kilometers. The longest distance is covered by the Excalibur projectile. Between shots, there is a reloading. In terms of time, it's 10 seconds. There is also a rapid fire system. It allows very quickly releasing four shells, which then simultaneously hit at the target. The gun is controlled remotely from the Volvo cabin, and this is one of the key advantages of the Archer. The cabin and engine are armored. They have the second level of NATO standing for 1569 safety standard. The cabin will withstand explosions of mines, which in the equivalent, six kilograms of TNT. Now I will show you where the crew is located, our workplaces. The cabin is armored. Here is my workplace. Here is my computer, where I work. This is the commander's panel. Here is the safety catch, which is cocked during action, after which a shot is made. In front is the driver's seat. He has the best visibility of what's happening. The other crew members almost don't see or hear anything during work. It looks as if you were sitting in a box that there's an additional hatch on top in case of evacuation. There is an autonomous heating system. I've spent the night here. There's even a water heater that heats water to 88 degrees. So you can cook sausages. Here is our gun, hydraulic recoil, forced recoil system. When folding, they fold up and these covers open. All this is done by hydraulics, so everything is automatic. Here's the antenna. Here are boxes where we store inventory, tools for maintenance, chains in case of bad weather. For example, when there's ice, they are attached to two axles, front and middle. Here's the cannon's cradle, where the ammunition magazine and the powder magazine are located. The personnel do not need to lift the weight of the shells on their backs. Everything is done automatically. During combat operations, the crew does not leave the cab. 
The guidance system is also fully automated. We are only required to enter coordinates, and the computer automatically calculates all the ballistics, determines how to lift, where to turn the barrel to make a shot. Fire! Watch this! No unimportant weapons on a battlefield. Everything is important and essential. Each and every one does its task to help Ukrainian forces to defend its democratic values in geographical center of the Europe. War is algebra. My name is Daniel Salom.